Something happened two weeks ago that has only occurred four times in the history of Division I college basketball. A team trailing by 11 or more points in the final minute won the game. Comeback victories may be the most thrilling part about sports. Whether it's the Super Bowl, the NBA Finals, or even just a random Thursday in the NBA. Today in this video, we're going to cover the four greatest comebacks to occur in Division I college basketball history. And if you watch till the end, we include a comeback that happened in March Madness seven years ago. It could also be described as the greatest meltdown of all time. It's very hard to watch. The first comeback on our list is from this year, February 28th, between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Michigan State Spartans. Iowa is led by Chris Murray, an expected first round draft pick in this upcoming NBA draft, and the twin brother of Kings rookie Keegan Murray. Before this comeback started, Michigan State was shooting 11 for 13 from three and over 65% from the field. They truly were making everything. Iowa found themselves down 13 with only a minute and 30 seconds to go. It all changed when Peyton Sanford made the first three with a minute 29 left. Iowa's head coach, Fran McCaffrey, immediately calls a timeout and was so upset with the officiating, he stared down the official for the whole timeout. Now, normally an official would ignore something like this. Kelly Pfeiffer says, screw that. I'm not intimidated. I'll meet you in the middle. Some players even credited their coach with that stare down as the spark they needed to make this comeback. 40 seconds left. Connor McCaffrey hits a three to bring it to a seven point game. Michigan State then proceeds to turn the ball over, which results in a Chris Murray three, bringing the lead to only four points. AJ Hogard hits both free throws, bringing it back to a six point game before Patrick McCaffrey hits a deep three making the score 98 to 95 with 21 seconds left. And again, AJ Hogard makes both free throws, bringing it back to a five point lead before Connor McCaffrey again hits another three with 11 seconds left. It's a two point game. And now after making the first free throw, Hogard misses his only free throw down the stretch, keeping it a three point game where Peyton Sanford then goes down and hits an absolute dagger Carver Hawkeye Arena goes crazy. A 10-point lead erased in 59 seconds. Iowa would then go on to win by six points in OT. And if you bet on this game, Iowa was minus five and a half. So not only did they come back, but they covered the spread. Our next comeback is between Nevada and New Mexico. Nevada was down 25 points with 11 minutes left, then 19 with four, 14 with a little over a minute, and still 11 points with 59 seconds to go. Nevada would then proceed to hit four three-pointers in the next 40 seconds, including this ridiculous one from Marcus Marshall. Down 94 to 91 with 16 seconds left, Sam Logwood for New Mexico heads to the line, misses both free throws, and Marcus Marshall comes down and hits another ridiculous three. This dude had four threes of his own in the final minute of regulation. It wouldn't be a comeback if you don't finish and win the game in overtime. After New Mexico only goes one of two from the line, Jordan Caroline, who had 45 points in this game, hits a game-winning three, completing this unbelievable comeback in dramatic fashion. For our third comeback of the list, we go all the way back to 2005, 18 years ago, holy crap, I feel old, includes a different Nevada school, UNLV, the running rebels against the Aztecs of San Diego State. UNLV trailed by 18 with 1228 left and by 10 points again with 28 seconds to go in the game. I couldn't find much footage of this game, but I did find the final minute and I gotta say San Diego State just gave this game away. Missing free throws, following three point shooters, turning the ball over. San Diego Union Tribune called this game an abrupt collapse reminiscent of the stock market steep fall in 1929. I get this loss was bad, but holy crap, guys, it's college basketball. With 5.6 seconds left in regulation, UNLV was down three. Freshman Curtis Terry hit an insane three to tie the game as time expired, sending it into overtime. UNLV would go on to win 93-91 in overtime. I wish we had more footage of this game. And our final comeback on the biggest stage, the most dramatic one in the round of 32 in March Madness comes in the year 2016 between the University of Northern Iowa and Texas A&M. LeBron James said he would have quit basketball if he was a part of this UNI the squad. 20 seconds of that game and uh, I, I would have quit basketball. <laughs> <laughs> if I was on Northern Iowa, I would quit. You up eight with 20 plus seconds, you up five with 10 seconds, I would quit. 
The Northern Iowa Panthers are notorious for this insane March Madness choke because unlike most of the other teams on this list, they completely imploded. They couldn't even get the ball over half court. It reminded me of a bunch of sixth graders experiencing a full court press for the first time. UNI was an underdog story after they upset the sixth seeded Texas on a half court buzzer beater from Paul Jesperson, which makes us even more sad because they really did seem like a team destined for the Sweet 16. Because of how iconic this game is, we're going to show you all 44 seconds of regulation. After a missed Caruso three, a and gets a put back, making this a 10 point game with 34 seconds to go. This is where it starts to get ugly. You and I burns their final timeout with 31 seconds left getting trapped, a quick turnover, and within like three seconds, Daniel House scores a bucket, making it an eight point game. I told you this was hard to watch. I don't know what Paul Jesperson's doing. He had the ball for two seconds and he throws it away. You have to have a better internal clock than that. Jalen Jones scores the easiest basket of his career. Like I said before, you and I has no timeouts, guys. It's still a six-point game with 21 seconds left. And Wyatt Lowhouse tosses it out of bounds. Texas A&M's ball. Daniel House hits a three with only two and a half seconds coming off the clock. Three-point game. As if it couldn't get any crazier, you and I has their only successful inbound in the last 30 seconds, up five with 18 to go. Here's where I'm going to complain. You and I get screwed. This is the latest foul call I've ever seen. The official waits for the basket to go in. Watch this replay. The you and I guy doesn't touch him. Don't feel too bad for you and I. They're still up two with 11 seconds to go, and they do this. And that's how Texas A&M ties the game in regulation. Guys, I am an Iowa Hawkeye fan. I was cheering for Northern Iowa in this game. I remember this meltdown. Somehow, you and I ends up being up in overtime as well, 82-79. And they choke that lead to end up losing in double overtime, 92-88. to The worst meltdown and the greatest comeback in March Madness history, Northern Iowa guard Robert Nahr had this to say after the game. I got to the locker room. I had texts on my phone congratulating me on making the Sweet 16. It was strange because so many people just assumed we'd won with such a big lead so late in the game. If you like this video and want to consume even more basketball-related content, hit that sub button and check out this video I did on John Morant's most disrespectful plays in college. We'll see you on the hardwood. Thanks for watching.